Hey guys, what is up? It is no help and welcome to my ultimate Iron Man crafting guide. Crafting is a very intimidating skill on an Iron Man account. It's very expensive and a lot of people are very confused on how to train it because it's not really trained in the traditional way a regular RuneScape player would train crafting where they just buy hides and get it as fast as possible and it costs a lot of money. No, on an Iron Man account, there's a lot of different things and a lot of different ways of training crafting. But today I'm going to basically be going over on how I got 99 crafting and what I recommend you guys unlock, things you should go towards before you start your crafting journey. So anyways, if you guys like the video, make sure to smash the like button. A lot of people have requested this one. At the very start of the game, you're very limited on what you do, but when you first visit Artie for your first time, you can go ahead and unlock the fishing trawler teleport. Um, basically, you just have to come here once and then you have it unlocked and right off the right off the bat You can pretty much uh, go ahead up to these ships here when you get your first little bit of money And what you're gonna want to do is keep trading this the crew the crew member and then you want to buy seaweed and then you want to buy soda ash and Basically what you're gonna want to do is run to the bank deposit them and buy however many of these you want don't worry, you won't have to do this forever. There's a lot better methods of this in the future, but this is how you basically start. You turn the seaweed into more soda ash. Just go ahead and you simply just use it on a fire. Any fire in the game actually works for this. And basically you will cook all of these seaweeds into soda ash. From there, you're gonna need buckets of sand. Don't worry about this for now. I'm gonna be showing you how to get this in the future. So basically, just go ahead and click on the furnace. And once you have the soda ash and the bucket of sand in your inventory, you will go ahead and create molten glass. As you can see, this doesn't give you too much crafting XP, but it definitely helps at the start. And lastly, from there, you're gonna go ahead and use your glass blowpipe, which you can just buy from any crafting store in the game or any general store in the game and go ahead and make whatever kind of level that you can. So for me, the highest level would be light orbs, but this is basically how you eventually get the bulk of your crafting experience. First of all, I'm just gonna quickly show you guys the wiki. These are all the quests in the game that give you crafting experience. I'm not gonna read them all because there is a lot of quests that give you crafting experience. I'm just gonna quickly scroll through them. But some of them at the very end here give you a decent amount of crafting experience. And it also totals up to over 100,000 crafting experience you can get from questing alone. All right, so now I'm just gonna go over some things that you should kind of get out of the way before you really get into your crafting journey. One is gonna be a uh, way of getting their giant seaweed more efficiently and then the next is going to be a way on getting buckets of sand and these require two quests so first of all i'm going to highly recommend that as soon as you possibly can on an iron man account you do the quest bone voyage this um does take a little while to unlock you need 100 kudos you need to complete a lot of other quests to get this out of the way basically this will unlock you fossil island which is needed to actually get the seaweed spores and plant giant seaweed. All right, so once you have that quest complete, you basically just go over to Fossil Island and then just take the boat at the very end of Fossil Island out to the middle of the sea. And you'll be on this little private island right here. And you're gonna start farming the seaweed. This actually only requires level 23 farming, but to get this seaweed spores, I have a really cool method on how you do it. So whether you're training, fletching, crafting, whatever you want, basically just take out whatever you want. Um, so for example, right now I'm going to just pretend I'm fletching. So you basically want to go ahead and dive with this rowboat right here. And um, yeah, so just go ahead and dive. Um, you should bring your diving apparatus gear, but you basically just sit here and fletch and there's a chance of the seaweed spores just spawning here and you'll see them on the map um so whenever you're crafting or whatever um make sure that you have uh you come down here because then there's a chance of the seaweed spores spawning it is kind of a little bit rare but uh if you do this while skilling you will get tons and tons of the seaweed spores over a long period of time i'm hoping one spawns here for the video but basically then you just go ahead and you know farm these two patches right here with the with the spores that you get off of the ground and over time you will just get so many of these spores and uh collect these giant seaweeds like right when you start your Iron Man account, just keep collecting these giant seaweeds because you will need them in the future for sure. As you can see right there, a seaweed spore dropped. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this maple log, pick up the seaweed spore, and yeah, tons of these will spawn while you just do skilling down here. Then you can go ahead and farm them and get tons of the giant seaweed. 
The cool thing about the giant seaweeds as well is they only take 40 minutes to grow and basically when you're done with them you can just harvest them and collect them. Now these giant seaweeds are really good because they actually turn into six molten glass instead of just the, the regular one that the regular seaweeds gets you. So if you can stack these in your bank over time you will get so any and uh just as soon as you can start this do this on your iron man account every time you do a birdhouse run you um it'll pay off in the long run for sure so just collect as many of these as you possibly can all right for the next method of collecting the buckets of sand the best way for iron man to do this in the game is to actually mine out the sand yourself and this actually got me a ton of mining levels when i first started off this account so basically you're going to need 35 mining to mine sandstone and you it's basically just outside of uh, alcrid you kind of just walk into the desert a bit if you're here long term make sure you bring like the um the water skins and as well as the desert armor but i'm just showing you but basically another way you can get here is if you use the fairy ring code biq and then you just want to run up to the quarry so i will meet you at the quarry also bring a little bit of gp and empty buckets if you want to buy empty buckets you can actually just buy them right in the shantai pass here all right so once you've made it to the desert you're going to want to start to ma to um, mine the sandstone make sure you don't mine the granite the sandstone's the one that's like a little bit like lighter you know what i mean so um the granite's like the darker ish one so there's a bunch of spots here where you can just simply mine it and uh this is a great way to passively get mining xp as you can see there's a ton of iron man accounts here sorry about that i didn't mean to crash you there basically you just get a full inventory up here and you deposit it in the grinder right here and uh basically just for those four pieces that's worth 17 buckets of sand and uh if i get if i go to him and click claim or check you can see that i have 3,000 buckets that i've gained or that i, I have 3,000 buckets that i've deposited in him so if i want to put more buckets in him i can go ahead and put the 1,000 buckets in here and now i have 4,000 buckets and if i want to claim out the sand i have to actually pay 50 gp per bucket so i have 17 in there so let's go ahead and deposit all of them and there we go 17 buckets of sand that i just made so you're gonna want to do this um, back when I was going for 99 crafting, I think I got like 200,000 buckets of sand, but, uh, yeah, it takes some time. You can get a couple thousand here, a couple thousand there, but, uh, yeah, make sure you have the money to deposit it out as well, but, uh, one of the best ways to get buckets of sand for sure. All right, one more quest that I'm going to highly recommend that you do is the quest Hand in the Sand, because this will get you passive buckets of sand every single day. So basically, once you complete this quest, Bert will give you 84 buckets of sand every single day and uh, you have to go up to him and claim him until you have um, the uh, I think it's the elite arty diary out of the way so once you have that one they will automatically get deposited into your bank but before that you can just go ahead up to him and claim your buckets of sand every single day so it, you know an extra 84 every day definitely helps especially if you didn't do any mining that day and the last quest that I'm going to tell you to do is the lunar diplomacy quest basically Basically, this quest gets you access to the lunar spellbook which makes crafting a whole lot easier now you can slowly go towards this but the whole time be collecting the buckets of sand and the giant seaweed because you're going to need an awful lot of it but this just speeds it up so much another thing that i highly recommend you do is um you know either get an air staff or a dust battle staff and then make sure that you have the tome of fire or this is going to be very expensive so um you know grind out that winter todd get the tome of fire and then get yourself an air staff because this staff or this spell actually requires ten, um six fire runes and 10 air runes so going to be very expensive if you do not have these two things but then obviously you're going to need to make astral runes which you also can start crafting once you finish this quest Basically, why this spell is so good is because with what you can do now is if I just go ahead and deposit pretty much everything that I'm wearing, take out my astral runes again to use the spell, I can go ahead now and deposit like three of my giant seaweeds because, you know, they use six each. There's six um, soda ashes each, and then just go ahead and make up deposit a ton of buckets of sand. And now instead of using them on a furnace that takes super slow, I can just go ahead and use this spell as you can see my whole inventory plus seven of them are on the ground so what you want to do is just over time collect these giant seaweeds and then go ahead grab your buckets of sand out and cast the spell again as you can see you're also gaining crafting experience magic experience this entire time here and overall it's just a really really fast method of getting 
you know, tons of molten glass to do crafting over time. So what I kind of did is I would just do a bunch of inventories, you know what I mean, like this sort of, and then I would just sit here and continuously spam, pick up the molten glass that drops on the ground. And then from there, the highest level thing that you can make in the glass section of crafting is what you're going to want to do. Um, I would stick with, you know, glass orbs because you could also get crafting experience with this in the future. And then, you know, go ahead and move on to once you hit 87, these light orbs, they give you 70 experience. So, you know, get as much molten glass as you want or as you need. And then just, you know, you can sit AFK at a bank and get your crafting experience this way. Once, you know, you get all the buckets of sand, you get all the seaweed out of the way, crafting actually becomes pretty easy and pretty chill. So overall, crafting just takes a long time it's a lot of prep and that's a lot of work but this is how you get a lot of your exp now i personally did that all the way to 99 crafting but there are tons of other methods that you can do so i killed a ton of zalra and he drops or she drops a lot of battle staffs and then you know with other slayer creatures you get like orbs or you can even charge the orbs yourself and this can be some pretty good passive crafting experience as well i mean it's not not going to be crazy or anything but you can actually make a lot of money out of this by high elking the battle staffs just something else to keep in mind course too if you do a lot of dragon slayer tasks or if you kill a lot of vorkath over time you will get tons of the hides and then you can just do the you know the regular traditional crafting method of crafting dragon hide bodies and stuff like that and allocating them as well this can add up too and another personal favorite of mine is crafting gems you get a ton of gems on an iron man account and they are pretty fast crafting experience as well you get these through slayer you know you get them over time with mining and overall you can just stack a ton of these up in your bank too and they get, go for a solid chunk of crafting experience you can also turn them into jewelry and stuff like that too and make more even more money and even more crafting experience but uh overall the bulk of it and the majority of it is going to be through the molten glass method so go ahead get all those requirements out of the way make sure you're collecting your buckets of sand make sure you're getting your giant seaweed and crafting should be very simple for you guys on your iron man accounts anyways i really hope this guide was uh useful i know uh when i first started crafting i had no idea about mining the uh sand and stuff like that i didn't know about the giant seaweeds and how useful they were so i really hope this helped you on getting your crafting up anyways catch you guys in the next video see ya later